Are you absolutely certain you saw an eastbound train go by your place the night of the wreck? Well, uh, I'd say... Uh, Answer uh, yes or no. Did you see that train? You're darn shooting I've seen that train. It sure did go by my place. That's all I wanted to know. Mr. Conley, you're an operator at the Lone Pine Station, are you not? Yes, sir, I am. And if I'm not mistaken, you were on duty the night of the 13th last month. I was. Mr. Conley, you've heard the testimony given by the witnesses here who live along the right-of-way, that they saw and heard an eastbound train. Is there any reason why you didn't hold that train when you knew that 101 was coming west on a single track? Because there was no train to hold. That's why. There ain't nothing eastbound after dark until 11.55, unless it's a freight or a special. Your chief dispatcher can tell you that. Mr. Conley, are you positively sure that... Sure. Close that one, please. Tell me, Mr. Conley, how do you account for not having seen that train? Because there was no train. I'd know if a train passed my tower, wouldn't I? There was to a train. Mr. Harrington, I've been a railroad man all my life. When I see a headlight bearing down on me when I have the right of way, I know it. You bet. Yeah. Huh. Nobody's doubting anybody's word. It's merely that the reports and testimonies have been conflicting to the point of improbability. Tell us more in detail just what occurred, Nolan. Well, we were rolling along about 60 miles an hour. Axel, my fireman here, had trouble with the oil pressure. I turned to take a quick look, and when I turned back, there was a headlight bearing down on me at full speed. I gave my train all the air it could stand. Just had time to yell to Axel. And that's all I knew till I woke up in the hospital. Yeah, sure. And he was right there, too, Mr. Harrington. I saw the headlight, and when Smokey picked on the brakes, I picked in the fly right straight into the firebox. Yeah. You can call it the goose train if you want. But I was a pretty good ghost that can race a boat like this here. Just feel it as hard. There is something the hardest fan had about, I can tell you. Well, what are we stopping here for? Don't you know we're late? 
I've got to go and see Dad and get the keys to the beach house. I suppose you'll be all day talking to that frog-sized stenographer. Now, if you keep me now, waiting, I'll... honey, don't get on any of the Andres. I'll be back right away, as quick as you can powder your nose. And it needs it. We've stopped at so many places since we started. I feel like I'm working on a milk route. All right, hurry up and get your keys. My father, I want to see him right away. It's very important. I'm sorry, but he's very busy right now. They're holding an inquiry about the last wreck. Wreck? Was there a wreck? Of course. Well, that's a shame. But there's nothing like a wreck to wear out an engine. <laughs> I have to see him just the same right now. I have to keep everyone out of there, even you. His own son? Please. Which one of these men is forward of your wrecking crew, Mr. Reynolds? You are, I believe, Mr. Donovan. Yes, sir. Say, Dad, if you get the keys to the beach house, I want to get down home. But I have been waiting for one minute. Shall I question him, Mr. Harrington? Yes, please. Mr. Donovan, how soon after the wreck were you and your crew standing by? About two hours. I see. And did you make any investigation as to the cause of the wreck? Well, I took a look around, but I didn't have much time to do any investigating. Was there any evidence of another train having been there? No. No, there wasn't, Mr. Harrington. But of course there wouldn't be. There was no collision. And railroad tracks is railroad tracks, Mr. Harrington. And all they show is that trains can go over them. Tell me, Donovan. Was there any identification that the track might have been tampered with? No, sir. If there had been, I couldn't have told anyway. When the engine was derailed, it chewed up about 50 feet of track. Perhaps the foreman of the road crew that repaired the track after the wreck might have observed something. Which one of these men is here, Reynolds? He isn't here, Mr. Harrington. We won't be able to get in from his division until tomorrow. We were unable to reach him as soon as the rest. Uh-huh. Well, send telephonic communication to get him here immediately. That'll be all, gentlemen. We'll postpone this inquiry until the other witnesses arrive. Give me the keys to the beach house, will you? Hmm? Uh, sailing yacht. Cutting tennis balls, golf balls, polo balls. I'm getting tired of it. If you were only a he-man yourself instead of an air... Lincoln food. Thanks. You'd be down here where you belong, trying to help me solve the mystery of these wrecks. Give me the keys. I'm late now. You'll be a mighty sight later before you get those keys. I can't find them. But even if I could, you're not going to get them. You understand? Now that's fine. Why are you going through your pockets? If you should find an extra hundred, I could use that too. See here, young man. Before you get another cent from me, you'll settle down to business. Now that is fine. Reynolds, I've been looking at that letter again. The thought strikes me. Do you suppose those fellows that offered to buy our road, do you suppose that they could have had anything to do with these wrecks? No. No, that's impossible. They're men of irreproachable reputation. I've investigated them very carefully. Oh, wait a minute, will you please? Well, all right. holding me up. I tell you, I can't find the keys. I've looked everywhere for them. Oh, gosh, here they are. All right. Take them and run along. Thank you. Son. Just a minute. Thanks, Ed. See, you're a good old scout. Suckers, the word. <laughs> On your way, on your way. Okay, I'll be seeing you. Now, the whole thing happened. 
It's... Oh, the holy Moses. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. Oh, that's all right. Not half as bad as the last one. Look at it. Look at it. There's Hanson standing over here. Come on. And that's a proof to you. That's me to change. Don't burn this. I don't care what Hanson Come on, says. Come on. Man, do burn this. That's you that don't burn this. I tell Hanson. I tell Do they argue like that all the time? You should hear him play pinochle. Well, I should love to. Would some time this week be convenient? Oh, I don't think it would be for you. You see, Dad and I live at the other end of the division. Oh, well, that's fine. Think I could come and see you, huh? Isn't it a long way to go just to see a pinochle game? Well, it is to see a pinochle game, but after all, pinochle isn't everything, is it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well? Oh, I have to be going now. Or I'll probably meet with a serious accident. Goodbye, Miss Nolan. Yeah. I'll be seeing you. Uh -huh. So long. I'm oh, sorry, Betty, but my father kept me a little longer than I expected. Oh, your father? Well, since when is your father a female impersonator? But listen, honey, I was... Why don't you pick up your feet? Dad, are you busy? Of course I'm busy. What do you want now? Nothing. Here. Say, what's the matter with you anyway? Nothing. Just bring him back here, that's all. All right. I'll bite. What's the catch? What do you want now? A job. You mean... You mean that you want to work? Yep. Oh, I know. You're right, Dad. Of course I'm right. I ought to go to work. You know what I want you to do for me? Assign me to investigate these wrecks. Fine. Fine. I'll send you out to the other end of the division. I'll write a letter to the superintendent... Oh, no, no. Now, wait a minute, Dad. If I'm going to investigate these wrecks, let me do it my own way. I'll get a job at the Roundhouse, so nobody will know who I am. It won't arouse anybody's suspicion. Say, me. wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you working for me, or am I working for you? I'm not going to have any young... Whippersnapper. Young... Whippersnapper telling me what... Say, will you please stop putting the words into my mouth? But I want to handle this in my I own way. I tell you that every time but I offer to listen. say anything, you stop... If they know telling... who I am... Remember, you're Bruce Harrington from now on, and I'm your friend or something looking for a job. Very well, my man. And uh, this letter will introduce you as Bruce Harrington. Now wait, the division head doesn't have to sweep up offices or dust off engines, does it? No, I told you all you had to do. That's so worse, is it? No, but it will be if your dad finds it out. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> look out, look out. Watch your step. You want to be able to walk down there? Boy, that was a good-looking girl. Did you see her? I sure did. And I want to meet her, too. She's the daughter of Smokey Nolan, the engineer. He was in the last break, remember? Well, then you know her. No, but we're going to know her. Now listen, you breathe up and introduce yourself as Bruce Hank. And the old man will be tickled pink. Then you can introduce me. I'm beginning to see the advantage of being a railroad magnet already. Sure, it's a cinch. Pleased to meet you. How did you know uh, who I was? Uh, oh, I've heard my dad speak of smoking over many, many times. Is that mm -hmm. so? <laughs> oh, pardon me. This is my daughter Caroline. Mr. Harrington's son and president of the room. Says he's heard his father speak of me. <laughs> How do you do? How do you do? And this is my fireman, Mr. Axelson. Oh, hello. Pleased to meet you. Won't you sit down? Well, yeah, you sit down too. Uh-huh. 
Didn't I see you in my father's office today? Why, yes, I was there, but I didn't see you. Oh, uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, well, I, I wasn't, wasn't there. <coughs> uh, uh, oh, uh, pardon me, folks. This is an old friend of mine, uh, Mr. Eggplant. What? What did you say his name was? Smith is the name. I'm very glad to know you, Miss Nolan. How are you? My father, Mr. Smith, and How is Smith? Apple, How do you do? Glad to know you. You're traveling, too, I see. Yes. I'm on my way to see a pinochle contest. Uh -huh. You play pinochle? You bet, yes. I was the champion of Minnesota, too. Yes? <laughs> champion. Hi, Bill. Hi. Sorry I'm late. The old woman again. What's the matter? Doesn't the weather agree with it? That's more than I could expect of any weather. Good thing I brought that lantern along. Can't see three feet ahead of you. No moon. Yeah. What's the setup? Everything on time? Yeah. Everything but you. Hey, 101 lost 10 minutes at Morgan Hill. But he'll make that up before he goes by. Say, when Smokey gets back on that run, you won't have to be worrying any about 101. Speaking of Smokey, that guy testified at the inquiry that he saw a train coming right at him. What do you know about that? Why, he's crazy. They're calling it the Phantom Express. Phantom Express. A train is either a train or it ain't a train. This train ain't. And we're the guys that know it. You're right. Wait a minute, boys. We're changing shift. Another guy lands it, you'll only have Red to take care of. All right, okay. Now, Nick's on the hot stuff. I don't want him blasted. <laughs> that's the easiest to tap one of the head, and that's that. Uh, that's another thing. I want this guy to see the Phantom Express. Say, listen. When we get through with this bird, he'll not only see the Phantom Express, but he'll believe in Santa Claus, the stork, and Ouija boards. <laughs> Wait a minute, boys. He's coming out. Hey, Red. If you get lonesome, there's some ghost stories there on the desk. <laughs> Good night, Bill. Good night, Red. Come on, Bob. All right. And remember, no rough stuff. Okay. Hello, Lone Pine. Chief Dispatcher calling. Oh, sorry. Conley speaking. Number 101 has right of way westbound. Nothing eastbound to the left 45. Check. Okay, Chief. Okay. That's all. Put up your hands. Don't move. Take your hand away from that switch. What? Get him. Hurry, Slim. I'll take him. It's all right. Quit. Don't worry. Stop that gap. We can handle this baby all right. Well, he can't make it. Sorry. It's all right, but get over there to the window, quick. Yes, okay. Bring it over there, Jeff. All right. Come on, we got it, Doc. Get that rope. Why, you... Ah, that's it. Now, just relax a little. Have a little patience. We'll show you the Phantom, all right. Here you are, Buck. Hey, by the way, uh, you know where I could get a good room and board near the roundhouse at the end of the division, you know? Near the roundhouse at the end of the division, Cap. Now, well, let's see. Let's see. Oh, I would have to ask Mother, of course, but you could stay at our house and share Jack's room. How would that suit you? Oh, gee, that would be great, only <laughs> Nolan might. Oh, oh. One more would tickle her to death. <laughs> My dear, I just imagine after the two awful accidents that you didn't know anything for a long time. Are you enjoying the trip? Hmm. I guess she is. She 
She's out there on the observation end with the uh, president's son. <laughs> yes, sir, the president's son. Hmm. You know, I like that fellow. The minute I saw him... That'll hold him now. Here she comes now. Come on, let's get out of here. Now, take a good look at the phantom, will you? banana. I think that's the hall bun too. right at home, won't you, Mr. Smith? Please tell me, Bruce. Everybody does. I wouldn't know who you were talking to unless you did. <laughs> All right, Bruce. <laughs> Don't be long, children. Supper's nearly ready. All right. Isn't it strange that you and Mr. Harrington are both called Bruce? Yeah. Quite a coincidence. Is it all right for me to use these hangers? Yes, that's all right, Mr. Smith. Bruce is the name. All right, Bruce. Have you any sisters? Who, me? Mm-hmm. No. Nope. Surely you have some cousins. Nope. Well, I have an aunt in Brooklyn. Aunt Helen. <laughs> Poor Aunt Helen. Ninety years old today. Oh, dear. Hey, when do we eat? You asking me? Gee, that food smells good. Doesn't it, Mr. Smith? Yes, it does, Mr. Nolan. Where do you get that Mr. Nolan stuff? Where do you get that Mr. Smith stuff? 
None of your business, Bruce. Come on, Bruce. <laughs> All right, Jackie. Let's go. Don't forget, Harrington's a fighter. Yes, and don't you forget this. There's no use of being a fighter when you haven't anything to fight. And you can't fight phantoms, can you? No. By the way, the old man sent his boy up to the other end of the division to snoop about. I've notified our men. That's fine. But you think another wreck and uh, he'll come through, eh? No doubt. Let me see. There's no moon on the night of the 8th. I wonder if the Phantom Express could come down the line on the night of the 8th. And now that I have explained the technicalities to you, Mr. Harrington, you see why we really need this new system so badly? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, your technical points are very well taken, Callahan. Uh, but I wish you'd write this out on paper and I'll send it to the home office. I'll do that, Mr. Harrington. But I, I wish you'd step down into the roundhouse and see how badly we really need this new water system. Come on ahead, big boy. Don't worry about us. Well, uh, how big of a uh, plant do you think we could install? Oh, I should uh, suggest that about uh, 500,000 gallons a day would be sufficient. Oh, uh, let's make it 750,000. We'll put in a big plant. <laughs> hey, you can't smoke in here. You get fired for less than that. For me? Ha, they can't fire me. Why, the foreman and I are just like that. That's me. Now then, Mr. Harrington, if you'll come on inside, I'll give you my idea of what we should do. All right, fine. Now, as I said up in the uh, office, Mr. Harrington, I have it all here on the blueprint. Mm -hmm. Now, you understand the technical terms, don't you? Yes, yes, of course, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I figure that if we put the plant right outside of that wall, Yes. And, yeah, mm -hmm. and run the pipes from one end of the roundhouse to the other. Then we can put a lot of little pipes uh, uh -huh. from down from the main pipe, which will lead into the stalls. Now, in doing that, we can eliminate a lot of boiler washing. That's just what I said. That's fine. Who did that? Hey, you! Come up out of there. Come on. Come on out of there. Yes, sir. Hurry up. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Callahan. Yeah? Well, you get a piece of waste. Get down there and wipe off those shoes. Who, me? Yes, you. Hey, Monaghan. Get some gasoline. Wait. Hey, hey, that's the wrong shoe. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, come on, hard hand. Make it snappy. Say, what do you think these pants are, a roller towel? Well, from what they're hanging on, I wouldn't know. <coughs> hey, what's that white-collared bird hanging around here for? That's old man Harrington's son. Well, that's the president's kid. He's learned the railroad business from the white pants down. <laughs> well, it won't be many moons before the big bugs of this road get off their high horses. Well, it ain't the moons that does it. It's the lack of moons. We made you an offer, Mr. Harrington. That's absolutely as high as we can go. Yes, and uh, 
You must realize that we're buying a railroad that has had four wrecks recently, and that hasn't enhanced its value with the public. Reynolds, get me that option, please. We don't want you to think that we're rushing this matter, Mr. Harrington. But in order for us to make a deal, something has to be done by Thursday. Wall Street doesn't wait, you know, Mr. Harrington. Of course I realize. More than you do. Here you are, Mr. Harrington. Gentlemen, Give me until Thursday at midnight. In the meantime, I'll call a meeting of the board of directors. Then we'll either sign or reject. Thursday at midnight. That'll be quite satisfactory. All right, that's satisfactory. I'll see you Thursday. Then. All right. Is the butter melted yet, there? Mm-hmm. Here it comes. Won't Dad be surprised when he finds out Mr. Harrington's coming to his birthday party? Lands, I hope those boys get home in time to get cleaned up before Mr. Harrington gets here. Hmm, doesn't that look grand? There. I think that's just about done, don't you? Mm-hmm. Well, here goes. There now. Doesn't that look good? Oh, it's lovely, Mother. Here come the boys now. Hello oh, there. Hello. Oh, what you got? Let me see. Oh, nosy, nosy. Oh, you've got one, too. Gee, Ma, you said you made a good job with that cake, all right. But listen, I had something to do with that cake, too. Ah, oh, you did not. Come on, Jack. We've got a lot of things. You can't come. Oh, we'll party when we're ready now. You stay here. here. That table looks okay. Who fixed that up? Looks like we were going to have a wedding. What'd you say? I said, it looks like we were going to have a wedding. Yes, it does. I mean, come on, we gotta get in. We're recording now. You wait just a minute. All right. Come on, Jack. We gotta make it snappy now. He'll be home soon. Yeah. They didn't have a chance to test the train out. I hope it works. Gee, it's a beauty, isn't it? Oh, boy, look at that, huh? Oh. My dad gave me one of these when I was a kid. He did? <laughs>
that now. Hurry up, Mike. Catch the train, Jack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, Jackie. Out the camera, Oh, Oh, Caroline. You're late, aren't you? Oh, a little bit. I have some things to do down the run. Oh, no, huh? Well, well, well. Oh, well. <laughs> Doesn't it look nice? It sure does. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mr. Nolan. Yeah, sure. Thank you all. Let me congratulate you, Mr. Nolan. Thank you very much, Mr. Hanks. Uh, I sure wish you lots of luck. <laughs> well, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Come on. Let's go and sit down. Let's... Well, well, well. You bet, Jen. I bet you plenty of smoking. I'm just a man I can do it. Congratulations, Mr. Nolan. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Well, now everyone sit down. You sit right there, Mr. Harrington. And Bruce, you sit there. And right there, Mr. Axelson. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. I'll bring him over here, Mr. Well, there's the old 101, Mr. Nolan. There it is. Let's see how your whistle's working, Dad. Blow out the candles. Come on, now. One, two, three. That was a nice meal, Mr. Nolan. Well, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent. <Axel. laughs> <laughs> You're slurping better tonight, Axel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <excellent. laughs> My goodness, Mrs. Nolan, I ate so much, I think the boiler was going to blow up. Though. <laughs> Wait, wait, just a minute. Uh, I was appointed as the committee of... Uh, my goodness, I was getting so nervous, I feel a little goose. That people just waking up all over me. <laughs> That's smoky. All the boys, they put in ten dollars apiece to get you a little present for your birthday. And I come right from the heart to you, to tell you. And all wish you many happy returns of the day. Thanks. That's mighty fine of the boys. And, and, <laughs> well, it's mighty fine of the men. <laughs> what what is it, Come on, Dad, open it up. Yeah, pass it down here. The boys were to put in a thousand dollars if you want it. It's a watch. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Hey, that's great. That's, isn't that fine? Just, just look at it. Oh, Isn't it beautiful? Isn't Let me see it, will you, Mr. Harrington? Oh, well, what do you know Washington. about that? We don't. Say, the boys like him pretty good, don't they? Oh, thanks. Why, look at the train here. What, what's what the matter? Oh, it jumped the track. Oh, poor little train. Fix it up, Jack. Come on, Jack. Fix that track together. What do you know about that? You know, Dad's just a great big kid. I think the party and the watch from the boys and everything has sort of choked him up. Engineer. Pulled out of the service. <laughs> Pulled 
<laughs> well. What's the matter? <laughs> oh, what is it? Tell me, dear. What is it? Pardon me, folks, just a minute. I better go see what's up. It's all right a few minutes ago. What's the matter, huh? An order came in from Reynolds with a charge in the and account of the wreck. You mean to say that he fired? Yes, I didn't know he knew it, though. And I wasn't going to throw a wet blanket on the party. Listen, Bruce, I oh, won't... Oh, no, you... I'm through. I'll be all right. Oh. <laughs> so this is the way they treat a man who's given the best part of his life to the road, is it? Well, the dickens with the road, Dad. Yeah, that's right, Smokey. They right, can't boy. do this thing to a man, Dad. It's not right. I'll be all right, my boy. <laughs> Never mind, Smokey. We all know it wasn't your fault. <laughs> I'd like to help you out, but I'm not going to be a goat in a dirty deal like this. But you can't turn me down now, Dick. Hey, I've made a lot of plans about here, it. Here, here, take a look at this. Why the dead night and say that we'll have definite information for you shortly. Sign it, Bruce. What information of you? <laughs> you got me, I don't know, but we're just playing a long shot, that's all. Mr. Harrington! My, that was a good dinner. Mr. Harrington! Mm. My goodness, I think it was a shame that they smoke in the street that around here. Why, he was the best engineer on the room. I'm sorry, but I had nothing to do with Mr. Nolan's dismissal. No, but you must have pressed his son. I'm sorry about all this, Miss Nolan. It puts me in a rather embarrassing position. Perhaps I'd better go. Wait a minute, young feller. Do you think the smoke gave us to blame for this? I told you I had nothing to do with the matter. It'll have to be taken up with the home office. Good night, Miss Nolan. Yes. Never mind, darling. Everything will be all right. Well, I guess I can begin over again. <laughs> no, you won't have to. Oh, the fellows have done it anyway. <laughs> Oh, you're a dear. <laughs> now, don't you worry, Carolyn. Everything's going to be all right. When they find out the real cause of the wreck, they'll reinstate your dad. Oh, they don't find out. Oh, but they will. How? Because I'm going to find out. And that's a promise. But I must have made a mistake. Is this yours? Yeah. Say, listen, punk. Don't let your fingers get so sticky. You're allowed to find it not so healthy around here. Can you imagine that guy making himself to home in my coat? Come on, let's We better report this to the office. Not yet. We've got to follow those birds tonight. But it, but nothing. We're on the right track now. The track the Phantom Express goes down. Come on. This looks fine, Mother. Yes, dear. It looks all right. Now, if we only have enough for that other window.
Mother, I hardly think we have enough of this material. I think I'd better run down to the store and get some more. I'll be right there. I know I shouldn't have taken the liberty of coming here, and Dad would be furious if he knew, but he's so proud, and you see... Carolyn. Uh, I mean, Miss Nolan. Uh, I'll do everything I can, and perhaps we can have him reinstated. But Certainly very kind of you, Mr. Harrington. I hope you don't think so. Oh, not at all. I have to run down the street. Perhaps I can give you a lift. My yes, if it isn't out of your way. <laughs> well, I'd be delighted. <laughs> I'd certainly appreciate it. He's a friend off to have. Don't tell me. Look at it. All right. I hope Slim was right, though. That's him now. Ain't it? Yeah. He's got a dame with him. Ah, oh, what's the difference? Come on, let's get him. Okay. What's keeping Carolyn? She just ran down to the store for a minute and she's been gone a lot. There she is now. Dad, look who's here. Axel. Yeah, sure. Why didn't you go out on 101? Who? Me? Why, of course you. Who'd you think I meant? Me? Excuse me, Mrs. Nolan. I tell you, Smokey, I was thinking it over, and if you wasn't good enough for the road, I wasn't too, so I quit. You quit? You, you quit, I mean. Yeah, sure. I wouldn't fire for any other engineer but you, Smokey, to heck with them on the railroad. But I tell you what we can do. We can jump in my car, we can go down and have a talk with the president, so on. Well, it wouldn't do any good. Besides, he wouldn't even see me. Wouldn't see you? Why wouldn't he see you? Wasn't he here last night for dinner? Wasn't he? Come on now, Smokey. This could go down. Do this. Yes, go on for me. Well, please. well, maybe you're right. Come on, Smokey. All right. All right. Well, I suppose we'll be down. Here's your hat, please. I'm not Mr. Harrington. You're not. Don't get excited. I'm a very good friend of his. So he could find out about these wrecks. Ruth asked me to take his place. <laughs> Just talking with her mother on the phone, and she's awfully worried. Caroline left the house at noon for a few minutes, and she hasn't come back yet. They just told me in the office that young Mr. Harrington left with her hours ago, and nothing's been heard from her since. Yeah, I don't see Al's car any place. Oh, I guess they got him all right. Yeah. Come on, let's get in our car and get out of here. Right. Well, come on, Mr. Nolan. We gotta get a car right away. We'll miss them. Hey, Grant, no. it's right over here. Well, now, what's this all about? Come on, I know where they are. What's that? There they 
go. Oh, Come on, uh, Dad, hurry. Wait a minute, wait a Come minute. Come on, Mr. Nolan, get in here. Oh, what's it all about? Come on, get in. We'll explain later. Oh, you give me the key to your car, and I'll hurry back to Mother and say, keep turning me up, Jackie, will you? Step on an axle. Step on it. Got Hey, there they go now. Let's yeah. wait here a minute. Don't let them spot us. My goodness, this, this sure is the lonely place around here. Say, Bruce, Bruce, what is that they down there? Looks like an old barn. Come on, let's go. No, no, no. It'll be dark in about 20 minutes. We'll throw up the lights and drive down there and surprise them. But suppose they've got Sis and Harrington down there. That's all the more reason why we should take no chances. Yeah, that's him. Well, you got him, I see. Yeah, him and his dame. Hey, what's the idea? Ah, she started to make a squad. Not a bad did. looker, either. Looks to me like there are four of them. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And there's four of us. How do you figure? You and Bruce is two, and me two. Two and two is four. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen. We got word from Reynolds today. The Phantom goes down the line tonight. Yeah, let's roll around and see if everything's okay before it gets dark. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Oh, baby. Oh, but I wish that was dark. Come on in, I'll show you a gadget. All, All right, right, come on. on. What the dickens is that? Look. Look at him. Doesn't sound like a car. They're coming this way. They'll see us here, won't they? No, these trees will cover us up all right. Oh, oh. 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 son of a gun. No, oh, that's the Phantom Express, is it? Come on. Right down that road again now. No, no, down the hill. It's bigger. Come on, let's go. Give it to Axel, old boy, like this. I wonder who this kink is. Let's find out. Well, excuse me, how about you looking for the main road? Well, this ain't it. This is private. Can't you read a sign? Yeah, no, sure. My, that's a good looking car. Is that your car? Yeah, who wants to know? Scram. Get him, Jack. Well, it doesn't sound like a Sunday school picnic. I think I'm a sluicing my thumb, perhaps. Let me out of here! Oh, that you young child of this! Bruce! Let me out of here! Bruce! Hey, Bruce. where do I get you out, kid? Uh, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Get up out of here. Here, what's that? Get that gang in the car and hustle along, will you? All right. Come on, get out of here. Take it snappy now, come on, dear. Come on, you come fellas, on, on your feet. Come on, get, get in, in that car. Get, hurry, get up. In hurry up. Hurry up. Come Go on. ahead, hurry up. Get right get in going. There. Fellas, come on, get in there. Dick, Dick, yeah. I'll take Carolyn home. I'll meet you at the roundhouse. Hurry. And listen, send Dad a telegram and tell him everything is okay. All right, Bruce. Okay. Come on, let's go. 
No, I couldn't. The wires have been down for two hours. Uh, oh, Mr. Callahan, this is Mr. Harrington, Jr. Well, well, that is some stunt you pulled. Mr. Wells explained it all to me, and I want to congratulate you. Mr. Callahan, I've got to get a wire off to my father right away. It's important. <laughs> I'm afraid you're out of luck. You know, this storm has raised the dickens down the line. I know, but you see, I've got a phone. No, no, I'm sorry. Everything is down. Traffic is at a standstill. Callahan, you better get me an engine. My crew. I'm going to get through tonight. Wait a minute, son. I wouldn't ask any crew to take such a chance. Besides, I don't think I could get one to do it. To... I know, but if you can get me a crew, I tell you I can make it. We'll get through. No, Mr. Harrington. I couldn't take a chance. I wouldn't accept the responsibility to even attempt such a thing. Sort of shack like, Did you get you a good know? look at these men? Well, well I, got it. I halfway saw them, you know. Well, would, you, would you know them again if you saw them? Well, I think I would. You can identify them, huh? Yeah, I Smokey, so, Smokey! You know. They yeah. got to send a train to, to the other end of the division. Now, wait a minute. What are you talking about? All the wires are down. The automobile roads are down. Everything is down. Well, what's that got to do with me? Mr. Harrington's got to get the train to, to his father by midnight, and you is just the man that can do it. You mean they want to, they want me to take a train through? Yeah, sure. Come on, then. Oh. <laughs> Oh, All right, let's go. Let's go. go out tonight. It's too wet. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye, Carol. Goodbye, Dad. Come on. Oh, Dad, take your coat. Oh, Never mind. The Good car. luck. Good luck, old timer. You've got three hours and ten minutes to make a four-hour run. But if anybody can get her there, you can. Hey, Dad. Thank you. Get the officer in those papers. Why the way, the black 
closer to the bridge every minute. Here, dude, Smokey! Hang on, my boys, hang on. Gotta make it. Here we go, we're going over. Give it to us, Dad, give it to us. Nothing could get through. Well, you made it to old field. I told you so, didn't I? Yes, you sure did. But it's not a sweet locomotive. We didn't burn any wood, anyhow. Oh, Smokey, lay off me, will you please? Dad. 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 Here I am. What is it? Have you signed anything yet? No, I haven't signed anything. How did you get through? Smokey Nolan brought me through, Dad. I found out all about this gang. They're nothing but a bunch of crooks. Why, what do you mean? You know what I mean. You tried to swindle my father out of control of this road. Yes, they did, Dad. Oh, don't talk nonsense. I'm not talking nonsense, Certainly Dad. You are. They're a bunch of crooks, do you hear? Dad, Smokey was right. There was a headlight bearing down on him the night of the wreck. There was? Yes. You see, Dad, the Phantom is an aeroplane with a headlight on it. We saw their men go to the hangar, and when they opened it, there was a large plane with a headlight suspended between the landing wheels. And then they wheeled the plane out to test it because they were going to run it tonight. As the plane took off, the noise in the motor stopped. We found they had a muffler on it. And can you imagine? In the cabin of the plane was a five-foot loudspeaker, which attached to an instrument board, an amplifier, that increased the sound a hundred times. And through this, they played an electrical transcription record of train noises, which sounded just as if the train were passing. The thing that fooled our signal men most was the column of smoke which looked as if it was coming from a stack. They only run the Phantom on nights when there's no moon. It was impossible to tell it from a real train. Are you sure of this, boy? I'm absolutely sure, Dad. Well, George, I thought this was a scheme. Arrest those men. They're swindlers. Well, I don't need any more proof than my boy can offer me, and I'll take his word against yours every time. Excuse me, Mr. Reynolds, but there's a couple of gentlemen not part of the uniform they're waiting to see you. Yeah, if you were... What do you mean? Come on, let's go out there. Come on, Come on let's go. It's going out. It's Come on. on. Well, we've been looking for you. Come on. Oh, Smokey. Good boy, Smokey. You too, Axel. Fine work, huh?